you know, creation and innovation is kind of the way forward, isn't it? We, we all should be running and doing lots of this. That's, that's kind of a, an obvious answer, really. But for a lot of businesses, it is an alien concept because actually the here and now is actually a lot of pressure. So tough times, tough economy, L-shaped economy. You know, John, if we get a bit of growth, we'd all be super delighted if things really pick up. Basically, pours one hell of a lot of pressure into a business because it's all about keeping the lights on, keeping the bills paid, all of that pressure. And that is probably the worst possible environment for creativity and innovation you could possibly want to invent because we all get focused on the here and the now. What do we need to do this month to keep the lights on? And we don't think long term. And you have got to keep that long term view when it comes to innovation and changing your business models. So, you know, I hear so much when, you know, I might go into businesses, particularly small and medium sized businesses, you know, I do a few bits of, um, you know, just help and guidance. And, you know, I read this, I get this a lot, you know, what you're trying to do, we're just trying to throttle the existing business model. Terrific, okay, so what are you doing around that? You know, well, we're just working harder, working longer hours and spending more money. Perfect, okay, probably not the right conditions for, you know, incremental or radical innovation even. Uh, or the second thing that, that you might get uh, as a response there could be, um, yeah, it's actually about sticking with what we know. Uh, we're good at this one particular thing. Oh, that's great, because, again, it's not where the puck is going. So, you know, guys, you've got to wake up a little bit would be my advice to those, those companies and just say, really think a bit bigger about kind of where the whole thing is going at a trend level, strategic level, macro level, in order that you can make it relevant to you. When it's relevant to you, make sure you're never more than one step away from your customer in terms of relevancy, because two steps is just a step too far right now. So, um, who's doing it well? Well, there was a big report come out on innovation, actually, um, only a couple of weeks ago. Uh, I'll show you the slide in a minute where all this data is derived from. Go and have a look at it, because you can run tables, comparisons, all sorts of stuff. But I thought I'd just run a quick top ten, keeping with the music and the vinyl theme. Uh, who remembers when the top ten came out on a Sunday night at five o'clock and you listened to it for two hours? Yeah, love it. Um, right, then pesky Swiss and the Swedish, we cannot knock them off that top table. They are just sticking there in terms of innovation. They're really, really good at it. But you can see there, there's lots of movers. And look at the UK. We've gone up two places, indicated by two stars. And look at the Americans. They've gone up five places in the Global Innovation Index. So they're doing something really, really right. So, so what could we learn? Well, I've pulled the table from, from here. Um, oh, by the way, I'm going to send you the link for this, Prezi. So if you're scribbling frantically, uh, don't worry. You can refer to this afterwards. Um, so you can see here that I've just put a, a few things next to this, and I'm not sure how well that is to, how well you can read that, but there's two or three important things. Their gross expenditure on R&D, what they call GERD, I'm sure there's a room of economists, John Girding, right now. Um, so GERD, they invest one hell of a lot more in research and development than we do. They've got a hell of a lot more of it financed from companies outside of uh, Switzerland, and 95% of the companies are ISO registered. So they have a quality standard. So that must only mean innovation is being managed in a very excellent way in processes which are defined and have outcomes and are probably scheduled as part of the business pipeline of growing over the long term. I think there's an important lesson there. Now, you have to keep an eye on them pesky Swiss and Swedes because they do cool stuff like this. I bet you can't guess what it is, because you're probably thinking hospitality bus for a Formula One team, aren't you? Something like that. You wouldn't make something so cool, would you? Um, let me tell you what it actually is. It's a blood donation bus. Wow. Would we think like that? Would we? Because they define the problem, pretty simple. We need more young people donating blood. Our engagement levels aren't right. What would we do? We'd get in a room, we'd be beating up some NHS authority somewhere, we'd be drilling the KPIs. But what they do is say, what if we built the coolest blood donation bus in the world? Do you think they hit their KPIs? 
they hit their KPIs because they created simply the coolest device ever to attract young people to achieve their goals. So this is why innovation is important. This is why we have to think differently a little bit off-piste. What can we learn from the Americans? Well, the Americans, good, is higher than the UK again. Uh, they have far more venture capital deals going through than we do. So there's a lot more appetite for venture capitalism in the States. They're investing a lot more in, uh, in IT services. Get in, back of the net, one for us. And uh, their new business density is incredibly high. So, so the landscape seems to be going really well. I got a tweet off of one of the, the um, best innovation people that I know on Twitter. You've got to follow him, at Paul Sloan, S-L-O-A-N-E. Um, Paul's brilliant. And he tweeted me yesterday and he said, uh, one thing you've got to say tomorrow to everybody is actually the conditions in the UK for creating new businesses are currently really, really good. So we've got some fertile ground for new opportunity and you've got to make sure that you drill that message out there. So on behalf of Paul, there it is.